How do you keep a melody interesting for four, five, or six minutes? That's exactly what I'm going to show you how to do today. When you listen to some of the best dance music in the world, it's often quite simple, but somehow they keep it interesting for four or five minutes. So in this video, I'm going to share with you seven of the most powerful techniques professional producers use to keep their melodic motifs interesting. If you're new to music theory and you want a bit more guidance, you can download my free guide below this video. It's going to help you with chord progressions, melodies, and everything else. I also want to say a huge shout out to my friend Mike Russell, who's very kindly let me use his studio today. It looks awesome, doesn't it? You can check out his channel. I've linked to it below this video. And actually, he is the one who helped me start the EDM Tips channel. Thanks, Mike. Top flow. Okay, so before we start, we're going to have to determine what a good melody is, because what's the point of repeating a melody if it's rubbish? Now, a good melody is something that your listeners are going to be able to memorize, be able to sing along with. And ideally, you want it to be able to just be sung by a guy with a guitar or just play it on the piano with two hands and for it to be memorable and sound good. So simplicity is key here. So let's start off by identifying the three most common mistakes people make when it comes to writing melodies. So here's an example of an overly complicated melody. Whilst there are some nice notes being hit there, if we remember that we want people to be able to remember and sing along to the melody, there's way too much going on in here. There are too many notes being played, there's no repetition of pattern, there's no repetition of pitch, and it's all just a bit over the top. The second most common melody mistake people make is tending to vary their melodies too much. So you might start off with a really nice melody like this. But then they feel the need to vary it. Like both melodies are nice, but there's no need for the two of them and it's just gonna make it harder for people to latch onto them. The third most common mistake I see producers making is simply trying to cram too many melody ideas into one track. So you might have several different ideas that sound good, but then trying to play them all together in different instruments is just too much. So it sounds kind of nice, but there's just nothing to latch onto or sing along to. Okay, so what does make a good melody? Well, it should be memorable. There should be as few elements as required to get the job done. There should be a repetition of rhythm. There should be a repetition of pitch shapes. And you can check out my video that I've just posted there if you really want to know about writing a great melody. But this video is more about how to keep that interesting throughout a whole track. So let's just listen to this melody and then look at the techniques for keeping it interesting. Yeah, the repetition of pattern. Okay, great, so there's our melody. Let's keep it interesting across a whole track. So the first technique we're gonna look at is layering, and that's when you use multiple instruments to play the melody at the same time at different points in the track. So if our main melody is a lead vocal, like so, let's just play that with the drums and all the other beats. On the last chorus of this track, perhaps that's when we want to layer it up with some synths. So let's have a listen to how that might sound. So it's the same melody, we're just playing it with several instruments at the same time. Now, at the beginning of the track, we probably wouldn't want to have those synth layers in there because it's something to build into on the second or the third chorus. Remember, when you're layering, you want to find complementary sounds. So if you have got a vocal, perhaps you want something with a plucky attack that's gonna complement that vocal. And then perhaps you want a second synth with less of a plucky attack and perhaps more of a release, rather than just layering up loads of different sounds that are kind of doing the same job. You also want to pick layers that aren't clashing in terms of frequencies. Now the second technique is simply switching out the instrument that's playing the melody. So rather than just adding other instruments to it, we're just going to change the instrument that plays the melody. So we could start off with our first chorus and she's singing. And then we switch to the synths for the verse section. Same melody, but she's not singing it now, it's just the instrumentation. 
Okay, so the third technique for keeping your melodies interesting is automating different parameters, even if you are using the same sound. So if we listen to the intro of our track here, we can hear somewhere in there is our hook, our melodic motif. And what's playing it is this synth here. But what I've done is I've automated on the reverb so it's really washed out in the mix and we could even have a low pass filter on there as well. So we could do something like this. So the melody is still there, even though people aren't really sure if it's still there. Subconsciously they hear it though. Now you can automate low pass filters, you can automate high pass filters, you can automate reverb washes, you can automate the volume. Those are the main things that you might automate, but that's just gonna add dynamics to your track and allow you to keep that one repeating melody interesting for four, five, or even six minutes. Okay, the fourth technique for keeping melodies interesting is using call and response. And that's where you don't need to use the entirety of the melody each time for every section of your track. You could just use the first couple of bars of it, have something else, complement that, and then switch back to the melody. So let me give you an example of that as we move into this kind of bridge section. That's the main melody, and then we're doing a response. So we're still keeping the rhythm of the melody, we're still keeping some of that melodic flavour, just hinting at what's to come, and that's going to make it really appeal to people and have it stick in their head for ages. Now the fifth technique is simply to use harmonies. Now technically they are obviously not playing the same notes as your melody, otherwise it would just be a repetition of the melody, but we can have them lower in the mix and it just allows us to add something else to that melody, perhaps on the last chorus, the last drop, to add a little bit of extra interest. So if this is our main melody, Why do you do this when in the moment? If we add this pan pipe harmony, it's going to be hitting different notes but playing the exact same rhythm. Why do you do this when in the moment? Couldn't see your behavior was toxic for me. So that's a great way for just adding more harmonic depth to that melody in the last drop or chorus of your track. Okay, before we continue, let me know if you're enjoying this funny, useful so far, guys. Give me a hell yeah, or an amen brother in the comments if you're finding this useful. And let's get on to number six, which is using or just repeating and reinforcing the actual rhythm of the melody, even if it's not playing the melody. So I've just switched these initial plucks to be following the exact same pattern as the melody. So let's have a listen to that. So even before the melody is playing, we already know the rhythm of it. So it's going to sound familiar when it comes in. So you can do that with the rhythm section as well. You can do it with the bass, anything that's just going to reinforce the rhythm of your melody. Okay, number seven, and this one is a lot of fun and it's particular genre dependent. Oh, I suppose it doesn't have to be, but this is adding glitches and micro edits. So I'm going to do that to what we've already created here, just at a certain point in the track. So let's listen through. And all I've done is add a shaper box, which allows me to add lots of glitches and little micro edits really quickly and easily. So I don't actually have to program them all in. So let's lead into the section. I'm just gonna start turning on these shaper boxes at different points and hear what it does. Okay, we'll lead into the glitch section. This is a tune. Can you let me know in the comments if you want me to actually finish this track? Because I'm kind of loving it. Feels. 
So that was a complete ad lib, but it just shows how you can make things a bit more interesting for certain sections of the track rather than the whole track. Now, of course, all of this hinges on your initial melody idea being great, being catchy. So I've put together three simple rules for creating catchy melodies every time in that video there. It's one of my most popular. It got half a million views in six months. So there's some really good stuff in there if you want to get your melodies memorable so people can be singing them along, singing them along, singing along with them and them sticking in the head. Don't forget you can download my music theory guide completely free below this video and thank you so much for watching i will catch you over at that next video